Today, we'll be talking about Deep Water, a movie that Disney and Fox rejected because it didn't fit into their family-friendly vibe. Deep Water shows us an interesting marriage between Victor and Melinda Van Allen. Vic is the kind of husband who would do anything for his wife, but Melinda is the wife who takes everything for granted. The couple has their shortcomings, but how dark can this movie get? Do open marriages always end with murder? Let's find out. You can support the channel by liking, subscribing, and activating the notifications. It's free and it really helps us to keep growing. Now, let's dive right in. Deep Water tries to show us the unusual relationship between Vic and Melinda within the first 10 minutes. In the opening scene, we see Vic returning from his bicycle run, with Melinda waiting on the stairs for him. As soon as he arrives, she glares at him, gets up, and goes back inside. We're also immediately introduced to their daughter, Trixie. This adorable little kid and her favorite song, Old MacDonald, seem to annoy her mother to the brink. Vic, of course, is the loving father in this dynamic. Soon after, the scene cuts to Melinda getting ready for a party. She asks Vic for a suggestion about what she should wear, and Vic tells her that she looks beautiful in the black dress that she's already wearing. When Vic advises her to wear the black shoes that he got for her in New York, Melinda tells him to go get them. That tells us that not only is Vic a good father, but he also puts up with everything that his wife throws at him. When the couple arrives at the party, they semper it while greeting their friends. A few moments later, Vic sees Melinda outside by the pool, getting cozy with her friend Joel. Even though Melinda's eyes meet Vic's, she continues as if it were completely normal for her to be locking lips with a friend. Vic seemed bothered, but he didn't react at all. Even Mary, a friend of the couple's, expresses her concern that people suspect Joel and Melinda are doing more than just getting cozy. Even though Vic says it doesn't bother him, his expressions showed us otherwise. Vic and Mary were interrupted by a man who looked like the host, telling them that Melinda was drunk and standing on top of his piano. Talk about making a scene. The two rush there to find Melinda completely intoxicated and attempting to play an Italian melody on the piano as she and the crowd sing along. The scene cuts to Vic getting a drink from the bartender, where Joel interrupts him to thank Vic and his wife for their hospitality. During this brief conversation, Vic gives Joel a subtle warning to stay away from Melinda. He drops a hint, saying that someone named Martin McRae started seeing a lot of his wife right before he disappeared. When Joel questions him about what he means, Vic blurts out the big revelation that he killed Martin McRae and that Melinda doesn't know anything about it. Even though Joel says that he doesn't believe Vic, he storms out of the party immediately after this conversation. Melinda notices Joel's change in behavior and asks Vic on their way back home if he has said anything. Well, Vic sweetly denies the accusation, but something tells us that Melinda doesn't believe the words that leave her perfect husband's mouth. Back at home, as Vic is paying the babysitter, Melinda enters the room topless. Vic is disturbed by her inappropriate behavior, but continues to keep his emotions to himself. Even in the bedroom, when Vic and Melinda are talking about Joel being dumb, she asks him to close the door on his way out. The couple probably has more distance between them than we could have thought. The next morning, it is revealed that Vic made a computer chip that controlled war drones, making him quite a wealthy man. Is that why Melinda chose to marry him? A few moments later, we find out that Melinda invited Joel to dinner and asked Vic to apologize for threatening him earlier. Later, at the dinner table, Joel reveals that he can't have seafood, so he chooses to have a grilled cheese sandwich instead. Melinda continues to flirt with Joel over dinner, which makes the husband jealous again. After Vic puts Trixie to bed, he comes downstairs only to see Melinda dancing with Joel. Before the two could get closer, Vic made some noise in the kitchen to get Melinda's attention. Melinda asks Vic to hand Joel another drink, but Vic can't let those two get drunk together again, can he? So he tells Joel that he murdered Martin McRae and orders him and Uber to make him leave. When someone tells you that they're a murderer two times, what's the only logical thing to do? Skip town. And that's exactly what Joel did. At the next story, which this town seems to have many of, we meet Don. Don is a writer who is currently writing a book based on himself as he uncovers a vast conspiracy in his town. When Vic tells Don who he is, Don instantly recognizes him as the man who killed Martin McRae. Even though all the other partygoers insist that it was just a joke, Don doesn't seem too impressed. 
Not only is Vic a jealous husband, but Melinda instantly turned into a jealous wife too when she saw her husband dancing with another woman. That led to a heated moment in the car on their way back home, and also a brief scene of the couple enjoying themselves in the bedroom later that night. In some way, maybe these two are made for each other. But nothing could stop Melinda. The next day, Vic finds out that she drew a check to somebody named Charlie Delisle for piano lessons. And, of course, that's Melinda's next love affair. Fast forward to Vic, going into a secret place that looks a lot like a detective's den. Here, he calls almost every restaurant in the city, asking if they have live music tonight. When he finds the one where Charlie is playing, he shows up at the restaurant, but keeps his presence unnoticed. Vic also sees Melinda there, sitting on the couch beside Charles and acting all flirty with him. The next day, Vic sees Charles walking down the street with pink tulips in his hand. In the next scene, we see the same tulips sitting on the couple's dining table. We wonder where those came from. Soon after, Charlie is invited to play the piano at a pool party at Vic's friend's house. Like she did with Joel, Belinda now flirts with and flaunts Charlie in front of all the guests at the party. This time, Vic isn't only jealous, but his face shows us a little bit of anger too. At the party, Melinda and Charlie are suddenly nowhere to be found. This drives Vic's suspicion, who goes inside the house to try and find them. Then we see Melinda and Charlie sneakily stepping out of a bedroom, right in front of Vic, who is standing on the staircase. As all the partygoers are having fun outside in the pool, it suddenly starts to rain. Everyone rushes inside, but the only two people left behind in the water were Vic and Charlie. Later, to everyone's horror, Charlie is found dead in the pool due to drowning. Is it even possible to drown in a pool? When the police arrive at the scene and question everyone, Melinda quickly accuses Vic of Charlie's murder. Remember the book writer, Don? Well, he's at this party too, and now he's looking more suspicious than ever. In another scene, we see Vic riding his mountain bike while having flashbacks of some, ah, interesting moments. He imagines Melinda and Charlie going to town, and he even remembers the moment when he deliberately drowned Charlie in the pool. Now we understand that the conspiracy that Don is trying to uncover is none other than Vic's long list of murders. Every time his wife gets close to another man, Don thinks that Vic murders those men in cold blood. Melinda and Don secretly pair up and hire a private investigator to follow Vic. Vic is quick to notice a strange car that has been following him everywhere he goes. As the secret investigation continues, Don's wife runs into Vic at Trixie's school and tells him all about her husband's doings. She mentions that Don keeps inviting Melinda over to talk about their crazy theories of how Vic murdered Charlie. When Vic is walking down the street later, he notices the same car that was following him parked on the sideway. As he peeps inside, he notices a telephoto lens and some documents at the back of the car. Vic decides to walk into the diner, right where the car was parked, and finds his wife sitting with a man. Melinda says that she's just having lunch with a man, and the man, David, says he's a psychotherapist who is new in town. All these efforts uncover Vic's secret end in vain, as he quickly uncovers the plot and crashes Don's family dinner. Here, he creates a scene in front of his family and accuses Don of everything that he's been doing. In the very next scene, we see Melinda reunited with an old college boyfriend. This man's name is Tony Cameron, whose flirty behavior yet again makes Vic jealous. Before Melinda even introduces Tony to Vic, Vic follows the two around town. Later, she invites Tony over for dinner and pretends as if the two had just met. The next day, Vic drives up to Tony and tells him that Melinda wants to show him a building site. Vic drives Tony into the woods alone, where he tells her that they'll be meeting Melinda. After a rough and long drive, Vic stops in the middle of nowhere and the two get out of the car. Here, Vic hits Tony with a rock before pushing him off the rocky hill, which kills him in an instant. Then Vic uses another rock to sink the body into a creek. When Vic returns home, he asks Melinda about Tony and says he likes the guy because he's got brains. Even though it makes Melinda a little suspicious, she doesn't say anything. The next day, Vic wakes up to Melinda and Trixie, prepping for a picnic at the gorge, Mind you, this is the same gorge where Vic had just murdered Tony in cold blood. Vic decides to join his wife and daughter at the picnic to spend some quality time together. After the whole movie, this picnic is where we see Vic and Melinda share a romantic moment when Vic gives her a book full of photos that he has taken of her. Unfortunately, Melinda forgot her scarf back at the creek, but Vic promised to get it back for her the next day. As promised, 
Vic takes his mountain bike to the same place to retrieve Melinda's scarf. As he tries to sink Tummy's body further into the water, he is suddenly caught by Don. Don and Vic get into a rough chase in the mountains, which ends with Don accidentally driving his car off a cliff and instantly killing him. Somehow, even the universe seems to be on Vic's side now. At the same time, back at home, Melinda finds Tommy's wallet with his ID card in one of Vic's snail tanks. She immediately joins the dots and concludes that her husband has yet to kill another man that she was intimate with. Here, she starts to pack her things to leave, but is interrupted by Trixie telling her that we are not leaving. In the final scene of the movie, we're taken back to the very first scene when Vic returns home to Melinda waiting for him on the stairs. There's just one dialogue that's different from the first scene and the last one. This time, Melinda smiles at Vic and says, I heard from Tommy. As the credits start rolling, we see Melinda burning Tommy's ID. Even though she knows her husband is a murderer, we're guessing that she decides to stay with him anyway. Deep Water gave viewers a dark insight into what open marriages can look like. It's the perfect blend of mystery, murder, and some crazy type of love. This movie helped us realize that love can push anyone to the brink and that jealousy can make you do some really awful things. What do you like most about this film? Comment, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. We'll catch you on the next one.